Pre-Calc 11, Chapter 2.4. This time we're going to be multiplying and dividing radical expressions. And we need to know that the mth root of A times the mth root of B equals the mth root of A times B. And we've seen this previously. Here's an example, square root 2 times square root 2 equals square root 4. And this is equivalent to square root 2 times square root 2, which is just 2. Okay, here's radical expressions. We have one expression here and another expression here, and we're multiplying the two. So we just FOIL like we've done before. FOIL is for a binomial term times a binomial term, but you should be prepared to do things with trinomials times a binomial or trinomials times a monomial. Okay, so first, this one times this one. You need to multiply every term in the first expression by every term in the second expression. So we have 3 root 7 times 2 root 7, so this is 6 times 7. Square root 7 times square root 7 is just 7. Minus outer, we have this one times this one. So we have 3 times 4, that's 12. And then 7 times 3, that's root 21. Inner, we have these two. 5 times 2, that's 10. And 3 times 7, that's root 21. And finally, we have last. So 5 root 3 times negative 4 root 3. 5 times negative 4 is minus 20. Always be careful of your minus signs. And then 3 times 3, that's 9, but we're looking for 3 squared. So the square root of 3 squared is 3. So when you're doing multiplies, you can do it with dot notation or the x notation or with brackets. It's preferable to do a dot, although if you do a dot that's too long, you might get a minus sign. Brackets are good. Using the, the x symbol is not so great because a lot of times we have variables and we use x as a variable, which makes it confusing between x and multiply. Okay, so we have 42. These are like terms. So we have minus 12 and 10, so that's minus 2 root 21. And then finally, 20 times 3, that's minus 60. And one last simplification step. 42 minus 60, that's minus 18. And that's our answer. It's customary to put the rational term before the radical term. Okay, multiplying conjugates. And what we will get is a difference of squares. And we multiply conjugates because it's the only way to remove radicals. Okay, uh, again, we just FOIL this one. 3 times 3 is 9, and root 7 times root 7 is 7, so 9 times 7 equals 63. Outer, we have this one times this one. 3 times negative 5 is 15, negative 15. 7 times 3 is 21. We do the inner. Positive 5 times 3, so that's positive 15. And 3 times 7 again is root 21. And the last. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And 3 times 3 is 3 squared, so square root of 3 squared is 3. I'll simplify. This goes away because we have a negative 15 and a positive 15. And they're both multiplied by root 21. So this is 75. 63 minus 75 is negative 12. And what you want to note here is no radicals in the answer. 
Okay, so conjugates are an important concept. The conjugate has the same first term and the same second term. The only difference is the second term differs by a, a sign. So if it's positive here, this would be negative. If it's a negative here, we make it positive here. And that's how we get our conjugate. What about binomial squared? So this is not a conjugate, but let's see what happens when we square a binomial. Okay, 3 times 3, that's 9. And root 7 squared. And outer. 3 times 5 is 15. And 7 times 3 is 21. For the inner, we have exactly the same thing plus 15, root 21. And for last, 5 times 5 is 25, and square root 3 squared. Simplify, we get 9 times 7, that's 63. 15 plus 15 is 30, root 21. And 25 times 3 is 75. Okay, 63 plus 75, we have 138, plus 30, root 21. So squaring a binomial will not get rid of the radicals. So what happens if we have variables? 6 times 4 is 24, square root b squared. Outer, 4 times 2 is 8, and we have b times c in the radical. Here we have minus 3 and 6, so that's minus 18. And again, we have b and c. And finally, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and square root c squared. Simplify 24 times absolute value of b. We have like terms here, so 8 minus 18 is minus 10, root b times c. And finally, minus 6, absolute value of c. However, our original domain is b is greater than or equal to 0, and c is greater than or equal to 0. So our answer is just 24 b minus 10 root bc minus 6c. And we have the restrictions b is greater than is equal to 0, c is greater than or equal to 0. And same domain restrictions as original expression. Next, let's try conjugates with variables. 4 times 4, 16, square root, b squared. And 4 times 3 is 12, square root, bc. Minus 3 times 4 is negative 12, bc. And negative 3 times 3 is minus 9, and square root, c squared. So we have 16, absolute value of b. We have plus, we have negative, they cancel out. And we're left with minus 9, absolute value of c. But again, our original domain is b is greater than or equal to 0, and c is greater than or equal to 0. So we can simplify this to 16b minus 9c. b greater than or equal to 0. c greater than or equal to 0. So, when finalizing answers, you must rationalize the denominator. That means there's no radicals in the denominator. So, let's start off with a monomial case. Here, we have 12. So we multiply the numerator and the denominator by root 12. And we'll simplify this. 
we need to distribute inside the bracket. So root 12 needs to be multiplied by the first term and the second term. So we have 3 root 36 minus 4 root 12. Root 12 times root 12 is 12. A little bit more simplifying. We have 3 times 6. Square root of 36 is 6. And we need to simplify this. We can pull out a perfect square of 4. So we have 4 times 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. We're left with square root 3, all over 12. So we have 18 minus 8 root 3 over 12. So there's no radical in the denominator. However, this must be simplified. A common factor between all three constants is 2. So 9 minus 4 root 3 over 6. We're dividing by 2 over 2. We can always multiply and divide by 1 without changing the answer. So that's what we're doing when we're simplifying. Okay, the binomial case. We need to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So we have 6 root 2 minus 5 root 3 over 3 root 3 minus 2 root 5. We need the conjugate of the denominator. That means we keep the same first and second term and change the sign. So that's 3 root 3 plus 2 root 5. Okay, foil the top, foil the bottom. 6 times 3 is 18. And 2 times 3 is 6. Outer, 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10. Inner, minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. Square root 3 times square root 3 is 3. And finally, Negative 5 times 2 is minus 10. 3 times 5 is 15. And now foiling the bottom. 3 times 3 is 9. Square root 3 times square root 3 is 3. Three times 2 is 6. Root 3 times root 5 is root 15. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. 5 times 3 is 15. And negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. And now we simplify the numerator and simplify the denominator. Collect like terms. We don't have any like terms. So, we just simplify this. Uh, 15 times 3 is negative 45, plus 18 root 6, plus 12 root 10, minus 10 root 15. In the denominator, we have 27. These two cancel out, minus 20. So we have minus 45 plus 18 root 6 plus 12 root 10 minus 10 root 15 all over 7. And that completes this lesson.